Welcome. You're about to see a video about a resource in Hancock County that has been helping people since 2004 when my predecessor, Judge Richard D. Culver, started the Hancock County Drug Court. I'm Scott Sirk. I'm the current judge of the Hancock Circuit Court and the judge of the Hancock County Drug Court. The Drug Court is a team of people led by our director, Beth Engel, field officer, Gary O'Neill, probation officers, addiction specialists, therapists, and law enforcement that try a group approach to assisting and transforming the lives of Hancock County's challenged individuals with, that have had several drug addiction offenses. We take those people in and give them an opportunity to transform their lives. We tell them it's not about the addiction, it's about the pain and we work with them to transform their lives and let them become the great gifts that they are meant to be. And I think through this process you'll be able to meet some of those individuals the drug court has helped, their family, and others. And we want you to know what a resource it is so that we can help more individuals in Hancock County. Thank you very much. During my active addiction, I honestly didn't care whether I lived or died, and to hear myself say that now seems insane. Um, for a person like me who, you know, lived in total darkness for so long, um, it's helped me see the light and to actually give my, get my life back. I thought there was no way out. I thought that my addiction and everything that I had was going to be with me for the rest of my life. He went from being on drugs and I never knew where I was going to hear from him or somebody calling me and telling me that he was no longer with us. It obviously causes a lot of grief in the family, not only uh, if it's a, uh, um, a young child living at home, for the parents who see their kids deteriorating health uh, and maybe find them uh, passed out or uh, actually have overdose and have to have the paramedics come in and revive their child because their child is basically dead. And then if you uh, compound that and have, they have kids at home, you know, seeing mommy and daddy lying on the floor because of an overdose, you know, the traumatic effects on those kids are, you know, how, who knows how much problems those are causing for the little ones to see mom and dad in that kind of condition. I got full custody back of my son. I didn't think I would ever get that, you know, and when I think about it, I'm gonna cry. I was proud to be part of uh, the original group that put the Hancock County Drug Court together back in 2004 and 2005 as we were just kind of getting off the ground. And you know that time was really a revolutionary idea and really the biggest problem we had then really had to do with, with the use of alcohol to excess which resulted in you know offenses like operating while intoxicated. And this you know unfortunately as the substances that we've had to encounter have changed to become more consistently now methamphetamine or heroin, well, the drug courts have to ad had to adapt for those changes too. And so, you know, it's really been re a really rewarding professionally to be part of something, kind of getting it off the ground and kind of moving forward. And now to see, you know, the positive impact we have for, for public safety and for our community by really providing a hand up and accountability for some of our, our people to help them get out of substance abuse and out of addiction to be really positive people in society who are taking care of their kids and having jobs and contributing. And it's really one of the most rewarding parts of my position is to work as part of this team to bring forth you know, really positive changes for Hancock County. One of the greatest opportunities that Drug Corp provides is that we have a team, a team that's filled with the Greenfield City Chief of Police. We have uh, represented from the Hancock County Sheriff. Uh, we have um, uh, probation officers. We have mental health therapists. We have addiction specialists. So we have that entire team there. It's about 15 people, and they are dedicated to giving their unique, their professional experience and expertise to helping these people through the difficulties that they're going through at this time. So that's really one of the great gifts of drug court. This is the first time I've ever been involved with something where people actually care for me to save my own life. This program saved my life and I'll forever be grateful for that. Drug court has just helped me in so many ways and I'll never be, you know, be able to tell them how thankful I am for all their help. I came from 20 years in law enforcement where I thought uh, 
you know, quit, you'll, you'll quit getting arrested when you stop doing drugs. It's just that simple. But once I went to a national drug court conference and uh, listened to speakers who have been doing drug court and addiction issues for you know 30, 40 years, it was an eye-opening experience. Uh, they talked about how uh, people who are doing drugs and have long-term drug use have a diseased brain, and they'll show an MRI image of the diseased brain showing somebody that has holes in the brain, they refer, where they refer to it as a diseased brain, and show that they can't possibly make the right decisions because their brain is not making all the connections that a normal brain does. And they'll show that brain one year later after somebody has stopped using drugs, and it shows where the brain is healing itself, so they're making better decisions the further they get away from their drug use. Addiction is a brain disease, and a lot of people don't, don't accept that. Telling a person that's an act of addiction, it's all in your head, you just need to stop. You, you just need to do that. Well, they can't because their brain is not firing on all cylinders, and they, they just don't have that connection to be able to talk to all parts of their brains to make that decision. Anyone who gets into this program and starts this program you know, you want to, you've been doing it your way for how many ever years, and that's got you guaranteed that your addiction, no matter what it is, is only going to lead you to institutions, jail, and death. You're not going to get everything overnight. You know, it might take weeks, months, but in the end, you know, you still, if you set out to achieve that goal, like, with the help of the team, you will achieve it. The Hickok County Drug Court is a post-conviction court. It has a lot of accountability for the people that are in it. It's a very difficult program. The amount of uh, drug screens and, and meetings and the amount of effort that it really takes to go through the program is substantial. The amount of supervision that comes from the court, from probation, community corrections, our community partners collectively is substantial. It's pretty, uh, really keeps a very close tab on people. It is certainly not the easy way out. If you look nationally at the successes of drug court, you'll see that the old way is not the way that we need to continue. We need to embrace the problem-solving court, which is what a drug court is, and a new way of rehabilitating the people who have come to us to treat the illness. We get the high-risk, high-need participant in our program and that's the participant who has high criminogenic needs but also has those personal needs like they need uh, housing or an employment or they need help for their children or they need counseling so that's something that we can offer them and the success of drug courts is a lot better than just putting them in jail and leaving them. We've worked hard over time with support of the commissioners and the county council to have great resources through partnerships with places like the Dove House, the Talitha Coombe House, the Progress House, and a variety of other providers in you know, central Indiana. And so it's really a great resource. It's a great resource for law enforcement because it helps us to have a greater community of sobriety and recovery in Hancock County. And as you, as you have a greater community for sobriety and a greater community for recovery, then what it does really is it brings down the demand for people, you know, for, for narcotics. Because every single person that's in our program is somebody who's, you know, been in addiction. And as they get into our program and they work the program with the resources we have and the support of the court and everyone else, well then, you know, these people are no longer going to be consumers of drugs. And instead what's going to happen is they're going to have jobs, they're going to reconnect with their family, they're going to begin to take care of the responsibilities that you all have, they're going to pay taxes, and you know, they're going to be contributing members of society. The, you know, the, the great thing about that is you take something that was a real negative and you turn it into something that's positive. And so it's really remarkable work. I'm really proud to serve as part of the team. I think it's good for the community and it's also good for public safety to be part of the Kankai County Drug Court. The tools that I have received throughout being in drug court has helped me stay sober, and not only sober, but it's helped me learn to manage my everyday life stress. I'm very blessed to have been a part of this program. Drug courts also help me just be a productive member of society, you know, going to work every day, just, you know, living as normal as possible a life that I could. Um, drug court 
It's just helped me in so many ways. My sponsor told me that if I had done everything that this, that this program suggests, I would have a life today that I never even knew I wanted. And today that's been true for me. The tools Drug Corps has given me, such as the IOP program and the relapse prevention program done at um, Families First in Gallahue here in town, has those was the, that was the start to show me how to live a new life and how to deal with my um, triggers and my my um, addiction. But the ultimate thing it was was getting me into the AA program and um, teaching me to work the 12 steps. The AA program is what taught me to live a new life too. It showed me how to deal with all that and find things to do and help other people in the same aspect as not just helping myself, that I can help others too. It's heartwarming to uh, talk to some of our graduates uh, who have succeeded and they will, they will call and tell me successes in their life. They, they still want to be praised by us because they, they, want, they want to make us proud. And when they succeed in life, they know that that makes us proud, so they got to call us and tell us. The whole program is a two-year program, but it's not like, okay, you just come right on in. There is a process. We want to make sure that we follow guidelines, and we have to follow the guidelines of the Office of Court Services here in uh, Indiana. There are rules, just like we expect our participants, you know, to follow their rules, we have to follow those rules as well. So getting them here is it takes a little bit of time we try to get them quickly after the t after their arrest and that's drug court model to get a participant into the program relatively quickly after their arrest and get them in treatment under supervision uh, drug testing there's frequent drug testing um, and then they have to you know the treatment is quite a bit 12-step community is a big part of um, the drug court as well. And any participant in our program will tell you um, that attending those 12-step meetings, getting that support from other peers is very important. I, I don't necessarily think just throwing people in warehousing them in jail is helping anybody, them or society, because while they're in jail, uh, they are not getting the treatment help. If somebody gets arrested for, uh, say, uh, uh, a domestic battery, you know, th they may be get arrested for the domestic battery, but the problem, underlying problem is they have an addiction issue and they get high, drunk, and then they commit the crime. Well, we're throwing them in jail for the battery, but we're not treating the underlying cause of the initial uh, in infraction. I don't feel like just warehousing uh, prisoners or inmates is the best solution when we can provide treatment for the underlying cause and maybe the next time they're not, they're not battering their wife and we don't have to arrest them if we treat the underlying cause. Almost all of them have been hurt. Uh, it's really more about the pain they've suffered than the addiction they're enduring. And so we take the time in this two years to get to know them, to help them, and address it so that it totally transforms their lives. We need you in this community. We need you to be contributing. You have a unique gift. And I think that's something I want them to hear. I try to find things always that I think would be encouraging to the participants so that they know um, they're valued, they're loved, they're needed by this community. They have a purpose. Thank you for watching this video about the Hancock County Drug Court. I want to thank Nine Star in particular for giving us the resources to present this, st this story to uh, everyone involved. And especially I want to thank Mike Burrow, the president and chairman of Nine Star, as well as David Spencer and John Painter, the videographer. Thank you very much.